what's up everybody welcome back to exotic gas lodge again and today we will discuss on another very fundamental topic of astrology which is the tatwas of planets tatwa means composition the elements which make up the planet and this is one of the very basics so it is very important for us to understand which tatwa every planet represents otherwise we will not be able to understand what a planet is and why it is of that nature because the element gives the nature if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video then click the thumbs up after watching till the end of course <laughs> all right before i start i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you understand the elements of the planets better so this video is going to be a bit long because i have to explain the tatwas of planets well i have decided i will do that in a different video individually so here i will just give an introduction of the tatwas basically what which are the different elements firstly we have fire let's start let's start with the planet sun everything starts with the sun so let's start with sun so sun mars ketu these three are fiery planets agni tattva basically what agni represents agni represents the fire houses the components fire houses means the power to initiate something and the power to stay committed to that the power which gives birth because agni represents fire fire is the man when a child is born that is because the man impregnates a woman without that the child cannot be born that's the first step the man has to give his semen to the woman otherwise it will not happen therefore agni refers to all those traits within us which deal with initiating which deal with starting which deal with sustaining which deal with cleansing purifying because the trait of fire is it purifies whatever comes in contact with it right for example if you put gold into fire then what happens the gold shines more the gold becomes more pure the gold becomes more illustrious the gold becomes more goldly <laughs> that means wherever the agni planets are sitting there is a lot of traits of these fiery elements which are going on agni traits are present there for example wherever sun is sitting there is full of agni mars is more fiery and ketu is even more fiery therefore wherever these planets sit they tend to bring fire there so for example if sun is sitting in the 10th house then these people are very much focused because sun is the power sun is the agni so whenever agni is sitting in the 10th house these people they are very much focus towards their work not work exactly you can call it work but i would say status because 10th house is the house of status so these people will only do those jobs or any kind of a work business or entrepreneurship where there is lot of status involved prestige and lot of respect all these things are involved because 10th house represents all those things that is why sun in the 10th house is one of the very positive indicators for somebody who wants to go into government services or if somebody wants to become a politician that is one of the indicators that that doesn't mean anybody who has sun anybody and everybody will become a government civil service person or a politician it doesn't mean like that what i'm saying is it is one of the very strong indicators and these agni planets they perform extremely well in the 10th house 
because they like to sit there because that's the house of status and agni is basically that inside us which motivates us that inside us because mars represents the body and body cannot sustain without fire because if there is no digestion the body will die <laughs> that fire of digestion is also agni so body requires fire otherwise the body will not sustain so similarly we have ketu ketu is also a fiery planet although it is a chayagra but it has the component of fire so therefore <coughs> wherever these three planets are sitting three means not together wherever individually they are sitting there will be a lot of focus lot of attention lot of energy lot of enthusiasm lot of vigor lot of strength related to that house for example if sun is sitting in the 10th house you will be very courageous to fight against the enemies you will be very much health conscious very much health focused yes <laughs> therefore if these planets are placed in the lagna it is seen that in most of the cases the person has a very uh, skinny body for example if sun mars or ketu is placed skinny doesn't mean very thin but he will not have a very stout body he will not be fat or overweight because fire doesn't allow things to grow <laughs> fire doesn't allow fat to grow there that happens if watery planets like moon or venus is situated in the lagna or if they are ruling that means taurus ascendants libra ascendants and cancer ascendants they will very quickly gain weight and similarly leo ascendants scorpio ascendants aries ascendants these three what i have seen in my experience unless mars is not sitting in a water sign or sun is not sitting in a water sign unless that happens these people don't gain weight much easily because whatever they eat gets burnt and agni tatva is also referring to malefics because sun mars and ketu are malefics why because that is the cause of the soul taking birth do you understand that is why the soul is taking birth because the soul wants to take control agni is masculine masculine doesn't mean male masculine means anybody who wants to control things who wants to be in a illusion that he or she is the controller if somebody has these traits then the person has very strong agni tattva in him that means even in the fire signs like aries sagittarius and leo there can be lots of uh, uh, too many planets there <laughs> then the person will have too much controlling power they will always want to dominate over others they will always want to control others they will always want to make everybody listen to them and that is why these people are most miserable <laughs> unfortunately because lord krishna says in the gita that you are not the controller i am the controller don't try to control <laughs> so the more you try to control the more you experience misery and anything you see in this world that gives you misery is because you try to become the controller yes if you do not try to be the controller then there is no misery in this world for example why is a breakup considered to be very tormenting because you have this idea in mind that that person is mine he or she should only do what i want he or she should only behave the way i want that means you are trying to control the person yes it is even if you say no 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 i am a very good person i don't try to control others but if that is true why do you get frustrated when somebody leaves you <laughs> as a friend or as a partner or as a husband or as a wife or as a child or mother father whoever he or she is why do you get angry why do you get frustrated everybody gets frustrated everybody gets angry because 
they have this idea that no 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 this thing is mine that i me and mine that consciousness that is the root cause of all trouble so the more you have planets in the agni rashis which is aries leo and sagittarius the fire signs the more you will have that inclination to control things in your life and that is why these people are very much they are very much impulsive because fire is like see when when fire is there nothing can stay near <laughs> everything is extinguished whoever touches fire will get burned so whichever house these planets are sitting it's like if you touch those houses in the person's horoscope in the person's life you will be burned <laughs> for example if mars is in the 6th house 6th house is the house of enemies so if you try to behave like its enemy you are dead the same is with sun in the 6th house more more than sun uh, mars plays a prominent role in defeating enemies because mars is that soldier who wants to go and kill others suppose these planets are sitting in the 4th house then you go and try to snatch their property they will rip you apart because they have this illusion in their mind that no 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 this property belongs to me this property is mine you cannot take this property this is only mine so whenever you have this conception to the degree you have this conception to that degree you will try to hold on because these fiery planets represent government also government is what that which puts sanction on you that which tries to control you that is the government that is why government is sun and sun sun also has mars which is what the soldier the army <laughs> therefore uh, the a government cannot be called a government unless they have a uh, Uh, army or police or soldiers i am not going into technical rules here that may vary as per country and different places what constitutes a government but generally when you say that this country has a government either it's a democracy or whatever dictatorship or monarchy still in some countries it simply means that the people who are in charge of government they have soldiers under them who will do anything for, for for them for example if the prime minister of india orders then the army has to go or if the president orders depending on the country they it will vary like in india the president is the supreme commander of the armed forces in usa also the president but in india the system is a bit different the prime minister has all the power so ultimately is the prime minister who does it in some countries maybe there's monarchy the king itself decides what to do but at the end of the day there is the concept of control that is why agni planets in the 7th house is not considered good <laughs> now you understand why because you have it's like a overwhelming house do you understand that house that house where these planets are sitting it's kind of a overwhelming house there's too much there <laughs> that is why sun in the 7th house what i have seen with people they want a person who does not exist perfection because agni whenever wherever there is agni fire nothing exists there so you cannot find fault with fire especially if planet like sun is sitting i have i have seen this time and again their expectations are beyond the universe <laughs> and that is why they are the most frustrated in relationships of course sun in the 7th house has other positive things also but when it comes to the component of the relationship then there is frustration depending on other factors depending on where the 7th lord is placed or where venus is depending on all other factors if they are supporting this will happen unless sun is placed in a water sign if sun is placed in cancer scorpio or pisces then the effects will be reduced because sun is inherently very weak in water signs 
but in other signs this will work <laughs> because the son now wants to control that house so you want your partner to behave the way you want them to behave you want them to be like that model which you have in your head and if 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 somebody has these placements or oh, why is sun only even mars when mars is associated with the seventh house especially when it's sitting what i have seen in my experiences these people focus too much on the bodily appearance when sun is sitting they focus too much on how affluent the person is how powerful he is how famous she is for example if a man has if a man has sun in the seventh house then he will always want a woman who is all who is like who is like the sun means who is very famous who is very who is very from a big family who is like very powerful so that they can show to the world look 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 who i have <laughs> they may not go on physical appearance that much but they will want power money position authority all those things they will want want <laughs> and mars in the 7th i have seen too much focus on bodily uh, appearance she should look like a cinema star he sh- he should be more the most handsome man because mars is the body because it rules the first house the original first house of the zodiac aries now you understand and in fact even if ketu is placed ketu is that fire which causes confusion sun represents that fire which is always there inside you <laughs> because of which you are alive because of which you are sustaining if that fire is gone you are dead you don't exist that is why sun is the karak for the first house and mars represents anger mars represents anger and ketu represents that anger which goes beyond control mars is like okay when there's some anger you go and you beat people you hit hit things you break off glass you break off this you break that you break your mobile you break your tv but ketu is that fire which causes you to go and massacre 10 people that is why they say ketu is the higher version of mars that means ketu means it represents those fire those things which is the higher version of mars which you cannot see only you can experience is the worst form of fire worst means it is the highest form of fire therefore whenever if ketu is associated with the 7th house and if all the other factors are not uh, very conducive then there there can be too much of that headlessness within the marriage <laughs> you don't understand what's going on in the marriage wherever ketu sits because it's headless why is it headless because there's too much fire it's like too much when there is too much fire everything is burning you can't see anything <laughs> that means you don't know basically what to do what is going on you can't see because whenever you try to see fire you feel as if your eyes are getting burnt therefore if ketu even sits in the ninth house although it's very good for spirituality but i have seen these people having quarrels with their guru ketu in the 10th house quarrels with boss <laughs> and wherever because ketu represents the scissors cutting so wherever ketu sits because of that fire there will be these kind of traits dissolution cutting splitting two or three wherever it is sitting if it is sitting in the fourth house for example then you will see that you may have more than two properties or there will be something about the property which will always keep bogging you all the time because ketu represents that fire which you can't extinguish <laughs> sun and mars still you can extinguish somehow 
But Ketu, my God, you don't see the fire. How will you extinguish it? <laughs> that is why these three planets are called malefics. Malefics means those trade those traits which are represented by these planets they give you extreme misery pain and who are these people they are the government they are the authorities that means whenever you break law or break a rule then also you get punished <laughs> now you understand why that happens and if you take the example of sun then opposite of the exaltation of sun, which is Aries, opposite of exaltation is Libra, which is debilitation. So there comes wind signs. I'm not talking of windy planets here. Windy planets, the they are Saturn and Rahu. But I'm talking of the zodiac sign here. So opposite of Aries, you have Libra. And what is air? Like opposite of Leo, you have Aquarius. Opposite of Sagittarius, you have Gemini. That means air and fire are having this contrast. And fire represents punishment and air represents enjoyment. Therefore, whenever you break the law to do some enjoyment, you will be punished. Now you understand why that happens. You cannot break the law. If you break the law, see who breaks the law. One who has, his mind is not uh, controlled because of the desires. Only that person will break the law. Law of the land, law of the country, law of the scriptures, law of an organization, any kind of law, any kind of rule. That means whenever you, whenever that desire house gets active, if you cross it, then Agni is there to punish you. <laughs> that is why in the Dasha of Sun, Mars and Ketu, there is suffering. Irrespective of however it is placed, even if it is exalted, all three are exalted, suppose. Or they are placed in water signs, or air, air signs, or earth signs, irrespective of that. Irrespective of whichever houses these planets are ruling, there is suffering. In the Vimshottari Dasha system, about which I will discuss later. Because Vimshottari Dasha system starts from the moon, and moon represents water. So these planets are not conducive for the Vimshottari Dasha system. Dasha is what basically? Time periods when a particular planet becomes the most prominent in your horoscope. We will like, uh, go, go to Dashas later. That's a very, uh, that's a concept which is very advanced. But people discuss Dashas in day one. Without understanding the tattva of the planets, without understanding what the planets represent. Without that, what will you do by knowing dashas? For example, if I say in Vimshotri dasha, which is 120 years, irrespective of however Sun, Mars, Ketu is placed, you will suffer. <laughs> now you will ask why? You don't know. They are malefics, right? Oh, what malefic? Don't just say they are malefics. You tell me why they are malefics. Because what happens whenever the time period, the dashas of these planets run, you have a terrible desire to control things. And then because this material world is Dukhalayam Ashashvatam, as Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that this world is a place of misery, then what happens? Because of your desires, you are punished, which is opposite of the fire signs, the Vayutattva. Wind, uh, the wind, wind <laughs> air and then you uh, it is like you are paying for your sins do you understand that is why there is suffering in sun mahadasha mars mahadasha ketu mahadasha why nobody knows they will just say oh they are malefics well, what malefic tell me why how, how they are malefics why they are malefics this is the reason they are malefics because they represent those things which is actually beyond your control because Krishna says in the Gita that I am the controller God is the ultimate controller so whenever we try to take the position of God we suffer so these time periods of planets whenever they run we will have a desire to control things 
yes 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 i want this to be my way but then bang on therefore the proverb is there now man proposes god disposes <laughs> man will propose and god will dispose so that is the nature of the planets sun mars and ketu so that's it from my side agni tattva planets we have to understand the tattvas what they represent initiating things fire three kinds of fire <laughs> all right if you like this video then click the thumbs up and if you have any questions queries or comments regarding this video then please let me know in the comment section all right i will close this video now wish you great luck with your fiery planets hope that you put some water there we will discuss about water later okay until next time bye bye see you